Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Boxing Bookie. Uh, it's good to be back. It is good to be back. All right, uh, we got a good one for you today. We got a fight that I thought was going to be really intriguing until I really went and studied the tape, and now I think it's going to basically be uh, a one-way uh, train wreck, one-way traffic. That's Emmanuel Navarrete and Dennis Branchik. Uh, before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Bookie on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Also, let's bring down the house together. There's always a bull market somewhere. Let's bring down the house together. The odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing. I do. There's always money to be made. Join the Patreon. Link is in the description. It's also in the banner below. Join the Patreon. Just $5 a month. gets a lock of the week. It's so many other perks. It's just $5 a month. The lock we hit last week. We hit it the week before. We hit it every week. The week before that, we hit the lock every single week. Uh, this week will be no difference. Let's join Patreon is the best way to show support. You also get the lock, so it's, it's a money-making end over for you. Also, subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. Let's get into today's show. Emmanuel Navarrete, Dennis Brancheck. I thought originally, like I said, it was going to be an intriguing fight. When you go back and you really study the tape, this is not going to be such an interesting fight. We all know Branchek. When you make a checklist of, of the pros and cons of Branchek, there's so much good and so much bad. It's just, you know, you start a fire with how much you're writing. This is long, powerful, relentless, wild, unorthodox, awkward, firing shots, slow, and always coming forward. Leaves himself wide open to be countered. Like, he's, it's such... There's so much good and so much bad. I don't even know really how to assess Emmanuel Navarrete other than you want to watch him fight. He throws wide, but he's relentless. He does not tire. Head is on a line to be hit, and he gets hit a lot, but his chin is stupendous. Winds up, shows his punches, but he still lands. He's so tall and long, you can't get him off of you. A tremendous gas tank. His feet are a mess. But he's never really, he doesn't really get dropped, right? Like, he's so off balance. If you just tap him, he's going to go down. Like, he's off balance, but he doesn't. Like, I said, there is so much to like about him and so much to dislike about him. He's the hardest guy in the sport to assess. Misses wildly. It's easy to hit, easy to counter, but you really want to stand in with him. You spend the whole day trying to run from him. His jab can be effective. He's got a really good jab, but he doesn't even use it enough. So it's not even worth mentioning as a factor in this fight. He's so flawed defensively and so easy to hit. He throws his combination. He lunges. He leaves himself wide open. His chin is in the air. If you can stand in with him, you can have him. I just don't know if anyone can do that. I'd love to see him fight Brandon Figueroa. He walks you down. He breaks it down. He takes your soul over time. If he can't get you out quick, he can get you out late. Like I said, the gas tank is, is tremendous. The chin is tremendous. He's going to be there. He's not getting knocked out, at least not now. Maybe as he gets older, he gets stopped. He gets older. But right now, what he offers is just relentless. He's just hard to deal with. He can be had. He can be outboxed. If you remember, I, I picked Kazesi out to beat him. That fight ended in a draw. I don't think Branche can, can execute. I don't think he's the athlete. I don't think he has the skills that Consacio has. He doesn't have the power he doesn't to hurt him. I don't really see how Branche has much of a shot against a guy like this. He likes to move backwards. He likes to move laterally. He's not going to be able to run away from Navarrete. He doesn't sit down on his punches, so he's not going to be able to hurt him. He's not looking to hurt him. He has a well-timing jab, but that's not going to be enough. Like I said, Navarrete has an iron chin. He's just going to walk through it. He's, I mean, he's going to have some jabs that he can land, and he's going to well-place the jab and well-time the jab, but it's ultimately not going to stop Navarrete. And the rest of it, there's, you know, he's got – he's a – Southpaw that switches. He fights from both stances, conventional and southpaw. He can he can switch well. He's got a nice lead left hand when he throws it. He doubles it up. I'm not saying Branchek is a, is a bad fighter. There's just 
no way I see him winning this fight. He's not super fast, so he can't run from Navarrete. He's not going to avoid Navarrete, and he can't hit, and he doesn't throw in high volume. Like, tell, explain to me how he's going to win this fight. I just can't see it under any circumstance. He gets gun shy to let his hands go, and he's not a big hitter, and he's not super fast, and he's not going to be able to stay away. I, I don't see a path to victory for him. He's got good lateral movement. I'm not saying he's a poor fighter. There's guys that he could be at a high level. But there's no path to victory in this fight. So let's take a look at the odds. Let's see how we're going to make money on this particular fight. All right, y'all. Uh, Navarrete is up to minus 600. Now this is a 550, 575. Now it's up to 600. We're not making a ton of money on this. One and a half times bet. Uh, so whatever your normal bet is, times it by 1.5. So in this case, 150 bucks is going to make you $25. It's not horrible. It's not great. It's easy money. Lock in the profits. Emmanuel Navarrete by KO, TKO, DQ. I really feel like he's going to stop him. And this is paying positive money. So I like this. They're saying that this is going to go the distance. I don't see it going the distance. I think he stops him late. We're going to take basically take the profits, 25, add another 25 to it. Put that on Navarrete to win by stoppage. So the $50 bet there is going to make us $65. That's 65 and 25. That's going to make us $90 on a $200 bet. It's really not bad odds. Like, this is really not bad odds. So we're taking from minus 600 down to, you know, almost – Minus 200 by adding a small bet on Navarrete to stop him, which I love the odds on. I really, really like the bets. Check the parlay to see what's a part of the uh, lock, lock. The lock is traditionally, normally, almost always, there's been some exceptions, a three-way parlay. This may or may not be a part of it, which is all I'm saying. I really like the odds on that. I think Navarrete, I, I, I don't think Branchett can avoid him all night. I really don't. I think he's going to stay in there, and he's going to get beaten down, and it's going to be a late stoppage. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Bookie on all forms of social media. Join the Patreon. Link is in the description. It's also in the banner below. Click on it. $5 a month gets you the lock of the week, which we make money every single month on, every single week. It's $5 a month. Get the lock of the, of the week. Get it every week. You'll hit it four or five times a month. For just five dollars a month, so it's, it's a money making op uh, opportunity. It is May fifteenth, twenty twenty four, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. Three D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.